Uh, I know you guys are still getting seated, but I think we're going to get started uh, because our time, has, our time is quickly evaporating. Uh, so welcome to Growing a Server Community. We have three pretty large server communities here. We have the Overcast Network, we have the High Pixel Guys, and we have the Shopo Network down there in the end. So I think it's going to be a great panel. We're going to take your questions uh, via the two microphones we have, and we're also going to be taking questions on Twitter. Uh, so. I think we're going to go down the line and introduce our codename. Did you want to say something about yep. last night? Yep, just uh, w welcome to our panel, and thank you all for coming out to MineCon, if you've come near or far. I hope you guys all had a great time last night. We did, and a bunch of our friends did. Yep, so, we, uh, we uh, had this we awesome picture from last night with some of our staff. Yes. Uh, saw a lot of people, handed out some t-shirts, and we're actually going to be giving out t-shirts and stuff after this panel, so stick around if you want to talk to us or get some t-shirts. Uh, so let's start here. Uh, the Overcast Network you may have heard of. We specialize in sort of vanilla PvP with game modes like Destroy the Core, Team Deathmatch, um, other things like King of the Hill, and uh, lots of different variety of game modes. So uh, we're going to go down the line here, and I'm going to start. My name is Monsieur Apple in game, and I'm Tony in real life. And um, I sort of founded Overcast about a year and a half ago on Twitch, and since then it's just kind of exploded over the past year, and I'm Super excited to be here. So, Yukon, would you like to continue? Yeah. Um, Hello. Here. Oh, no. this one. There we go. <laughs> um, Yukon, Yukon Apple Geek. I'm a developer for Overcast Network, and I've been a part of their community for since the very beginning, I think. I am Haji. My gamer tag is Haji K. It's really easy to remember. I'm an administrator at Overcast Network. I do stuff like uh, running tournaments and uh, managing our staff. Hey, I'm uh, Codename B from the Hypixel Network. We specialize more in PvP minigames again, but with more of a sort of plug-in slant. We use plugins to do special particle effects and spells and stuff, just to make the limitations within Minecraft that little bit more awesome. So we'll go for vanilla texture packs, but use things that people don't normally use within the client to do that. And yeah, I've been part of the team since its inception. Um, in some way or another, I helped design the framework that runs us, and yeah. Yeah, and I'm uh, Bruce, or Agent K in game. You might see me as Agent Kid. Uh, I'm the lead network developer. I do the infrastructure for Hypixel. Um, and yeah, as Codename said, I've, I've been on the team for uh, a long time now, about six months, not since its inception, but uh, for a long time. And uh, we love making mini games and making them really big, and that's my job, is to make the infrastructure that allows it to be really big. And um, I am, oh, I guess it's going to be you up next here. One sec. That right? <laughs> uh, my name is Matt Sumberg. Uh, I go by High Life TTU. I'm the, uh, the owner of the uh, Shopo Network. Um, I'm mainly responsible for back-end type stuff, uh, scripting, databases, which are painful, and uh, all that other jazz. And then I will hand it over to my counterpart here who does the, uh, the fun things. I'm Laser Tester of the Shopo Network. Uh, I, oh, come on. <laughs> Please, PK. That's, that's PK Effect, one of our players, and he, he likes to fish. <laughs> um, and so uh, I, I code for the Shopo Network and kind of made the, the, it what it is from like a technical coding perspective. And, High Life and I together design a lot of the a lot of the modes that we have, and then we have a couple of modes that that um, that were des designed by third parties. But we're known for Mind Z, Wasted, Smash, um, Crafty Bomber, most recently, um, and the upcoming Mind Z with guns and all of that. So anyway, it's us. All right. Uh, so if you guys want to start lining up, we have two microphones. We have one uh, on the left and one on the right. And we're going to start out with some uh, questions from people here at the panel. And then we are also going to head to Twitter, which is what I wanted to mention next. If you uh, want to tweet us, either at home or if you're here and you want to tweet us, uh, we're looking at the hashtag uh, MCGSC for MindCon Growing Server Communities. So uh, we'll probably take mostly uh, ask questions, but we are also going to take some questions from Twitter. So let's get going here over there. Hi, I was wondering what your opinion was on like inside jokes on a server because they're really fun once you're part of a community, but they sometimes make it harder to like starting out to kind of understand things. Also, um, happy birthday, Apple. Thank you, thank you. Oh. Um, 
It's not actually my birthday. That's an inside joke, which is, which is part of his question. Um, <laughs> so does anyone want to answer this one? I think that's a great question, because I think inside jokes can really b bring a community together and really make everybody kind of have this sense of camaraderie. But yeah, I think coming into it can be really difficult. And I think uh, a way to address that is kind of uh, one thing that uh, our faction server is kind of, HC Factions, uh, has a lot of inside jokes that stem from the very competitive nature and, you know, everybody spends countless hours doing stuff. And I know a lot of servers have that same structure, you know, like with a vanilla server, you're going to be there. So a lot of jokes come about. We actually have a player-run wiki where there are pages about these, some of these inside jokes. So you can actually research the history of the server, which then brings people, when they come in, they can read about the history. They can hear about people who used to be terror terrorizers of, you know, and, and bringers downs of nations. And um, and I think that's a great way to overcome that barrier for new players. And it gives them some way to start involving themselves in the in the server. And it also makes your server have a rich history to kind of investigate and learn about. So. All right. Uh, let's go to the left. Okay. Um, as a server owner myself, I. Um, I currently pay $15 a month for my server, um, and I've, uh, it's kind of hard coming up with the, uh, the income for that, and uh, I was thinking of starting a sort of donation thing, which I know a lot of other servers do, but um, the only reason I don't want to do that is because I think it would make it unfair to other players that don't have the money to donate or simply don't want to? Um, yeah, that's actually a fantastic question. Uh, mostly because when I started Overcast Network a year and a half ago, we it was actually from my own pocket and we didn't accept any uh, monetary, like there was nothing you could buy, there was no way to donate. Uh, shortly after that though, we actually added our shop page, which was a donation page, and we actually had an amazing influx from the community like, you didn't get anything in game from donating other than, like, recognition. Um, but we had an awesome influx from all the users that love to play on our server. And it helped us cover our costs, like, two times over. It was actually uh, really awesome to see the dedication that players will have to keep your server running, because they love it so much. Hmm. Thank you. All right. Yes. Uh, can I? Is Lee kicking about here? It's not Lee Bycroft, if you're here, wave your hand. No? Never mind. Oh, yeah, um, if you can go see Lee, he'll give you a month of free premium for Bycraft as well. Okay. For getting you started. <laughs> Thanks. All right, uh, let's go back over to the right again. If you have a community and you have multiple Bungie servers, how can you connect more than one Bungie servers together? Well, for all of our systems, we use custom code for that. Um, there are a couple plugins out there, and you can search them up on the uh, Spigot website. Um, and they just allow it to, you know, talk to each other. But even then, you don't actually need that. If you just set them all to have the same configuration so that they go to the different servers, you don't actually need to connect them together. Just have multiple um, IP addresses on that one domain. So. If you have like a website address, like for example, mc.hypixel.net, just have that connect to the several bungee cords and then have them connect to your one server in the back. So that way you can connect multiple bungee cords together. Uh, one thing I just want to add on that, the Spigot website, I think it's spigotmc.org, mm -hmm. or maybe just spigot.org, spigotmc.org, they have a great forum community and you can always feel free to ask questions there. Uh, a lot of us are around there quite often, so thank you. Thank you. Um, and then, so we have a question from Twitter, which I think is pretty good. I'm going to read it out loud. It's from at Mr. Mental Matt, and it is, how would you say is the best way to get your community bigger on a small server slash new server, but you don't have the money for advertising? Um, does anyone want to respond to that? Um, I, I think the best thing is to just differentiate yourself um, and focus primarily on on, on your core players. Um, you know, if you go out there and you're trying to think of a great idea, um, try to find something that's different than, and don't be just another, uh, another faction server or something like that. Try to find an idea that appeals to players that is something new to them, and then focus on those loyal players that come and join your server. 
put your heart into it and work hard and eventually those players will tell their friends and those friends will tell their friends and you will start to grow purely. All right, awesome. Uh, let's go to the left. Uh, in your opinion, what do you think takes the most time um, building the structures inside your server or uh, making your codes for the games in your server? You know, I, I think that as far as time, uh, it, it does depend on the, on the things that you're doing, but I, from my experience, it takes longer to do the building aspect of it. It can be really hard to, to build something because it's easy for like, you know, as the programmer, you know, it's like, I, it's easy for me to envision what I want it to look like, but that, but building has to be, you know, there's not just one person that can just sit there and build all the stuff because you're looking at something that, you know, your players are going to want to play, you're going to want to make it interesting. And so you've got a whole team. And I think that gets a little bit more complicated because you're probably going to work with a team of five, six, seven people, whereas developing, you might be working with a team of one or two. So it's easy to stay on track. So, mm -hmm. And to add on to that a bit more, um, it really, as he said, does depend on what you're doing. Like if you're making a game that is code-wise fairly simple, like some of our TNT games, that took code name few hours to make that game, whereas the building took much longer. Where you have some other games like Vampire Z or Blitz survival games just fr from our server that are much, much more complex and took far longer to write the code and to debug the code and that took a lot longer than it did to make the maps. So it really does depend on what the actual game that you're writing or the plugin that you're writing is. Also to add on that real quick, one thing that's uni unique with Overcast Network and Pride Jerry's is the community actually makes the maps for the servers. So a lot of the map making is done third party and they, the community, make the maps for us and then we add them to the servers. So that helps a lot with the maps and the coding is more for the developers. And that's most time for developers. Yeah, as you kind of was getting at, getting your community involved to help out, because if they love your server, they will be willing to help out. Uh, let's go over there, right? If you want to start another faction server, what would you recommend to differentiate yourself from the tons of other Don't factions? Don't start one would be my Interesting suggestion. fish. That There's a plugin on this bigger well. website <laughs> made by a very talented developer called Interesting Fish. No, I'm just <laughs> it's my plugin. <laughs> you know, uh, it's funny that you asked that, um, and just a little anecdote for me is that I started, my first server was a faction server, Woo! but it was a, called Hardcore Factions, and what I did is I played on what would call a death ban server, where whenever you died, you were banned for five days. I mean, it made the entire experience just incredibly thrilling. You were shaking after you were in a battle because you knew that if you died, you're not playing until next weekend. But um, that's what I did. Is I Parents loved it too. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but that basically I found that and I said, well, what if I bring those two together? And you can do the same things. Look out there and, and look at all the vast open source plugins out there. If you're not a coder, you can still combine bunches of different plugins to create unique experience without actually having to code anything yourself. All right, uh, left. Um, when, when you're just starting a Minecraft server, um, like just, out of the box, like um, what host do you recommend using? Uh? Um, if you're just starting, I'd probably recommend using one of the many game service providers uh, because getting your own server from an actual server company is probably way more than you need with that small player base. Um, there are a lot of companies out there and I, my only recommendation would be that you are willing to pay a little bit more than the cheaper packages because with that comes better support and better things because you'll see companies that have way cheaper prices but then you're also lacking on support or they're overselling their servers. So uh, I'd say don't be afraid to pay just a little bit more to get your server off the ground. Yeah, um, I'm gonna just say here as well, we're, we use MC Pro Hosting who, um, their, their main objective is to have really good customer support and if you're needing like help getting set up, I would try them, see how you find them just for a month or so. And if, if, you, if they work for you, then yeah, they've been really helpful for us. Um, I think we're gonna field another Twitter question here. This one is from TaigoACS1298. And he asks, I am a server owner and I nearly stopped my server uh, twice because of demotivation. So what do you suggest I do? Demotivation is a huge thing because you're dealing with, I mean, you know, as server owners, so we're in charge of anywhere from, you know, five players' experiences to hundreds of players' experiences. And 
And when they're not having a good experience, they, they let us know, don't they? <laughs> and, uh, and what I do personally to kind of get over demotivation is, is I, I step back and just kind of let the server run itself for a bit, you know, and even if, even if they get mad because of it, but I, I try not to make decisions when I'm feeling really down and demotivated because then I'm probably gonna make the wrong decision. And, uh, and just kind of reassess and say, hey, what, you know, why did I make this server? It's, you know, didn't I make this for fun? So why am I not having fun? And just kind of look at that and then figure out, okay, what can I do to have fun again? And maybe go peruse the bucket forums and look for a new plugin or something, just, just try and do something to break it up and, and make it fun again. Uh, yeah, great. Uh, right, I believe? Yeah. Uh, how do you guys come up with uh, new ideas for mini games? Well, there, there's a you know very broad uh, spectrum of ways to get ideas. For us, um, Hypixel himself provides a lot of ideas, and we look to the community a lot for ideas because for us on at Hypixel we have our forums, and we have a forum just for new ideas, for new mini games or add-ons for old mini games. So just talk to your community because your community members have tons of ideas. Just even in game, just say, hey guys, what do you think I should do to make the server better? What kind of new game should I make? And they will respond. They will give you tons of ideas. Yeah, probably better than your ideas. <laughs> it's been that case in our community. Uh, let's head to the left. I know hackers can be kind of an annoying setback, for, especially for PvP servers. Do you think that there's anything that Mojang could do to counter that, rather than uh, always being the responsibility of the server admins? Well, to be honest, there are a couple things that Mojang could do, but they've already obfuscated the code. It's already very difficult without things like MCP to, you know, make it, uh, well, there aren't many things they could do to make it difficult to modify the game. And so from their perspective, they could implement something like Valve's VAC, but even then it's supposed to be a sandbox game where everybody can do what they want. and. You know, limiting them, limiting players like that. There are servers that use hacked clients that, you know, people are encouraged to go around and fly around using fly mods or just mess around, and it keeps the sandbox feel to it. So I, I don't think Mojang should or is going to apply limitations like that. They might ban an account for something very, very serious, like legal stuff, but beyond that, I don't think there is anything they should do. It should be the responsibility of the server because it is the server owner's decision. You know, we make the rules on our own servers, so we should decide what their punishment is, not Mojang. I think, uh, as Agent K was getting into, I think if, if they did make anything to limit hacked client uh, uh, capabilities from like a client side perspective, it would impact modding directly and the ability to mod. And so I think that, that it's a trade off that we have all this wonderful content being made by the community who's passionate. And we also have all this content being made by the community who's malicious. And I think as server owners, what we can do is we can really work on trying to dial in anti-cheat things. And we can even, you know, I think, I don't, I don't know of any like major collaboration that's been taking place on trying to improve those things. I know always No Cheat Plus is working their, their tails off, but, um, but I'd like to, to do a little bit more in that uh, with trying to improve all of those kind of anti-cheat things. And that'd be awesome. Yeah, we also have a very strong moderative community in our server. Um, a lot of our community members uh, apply for a position on our server, either a helper or a moderator. Uh, we have, what's the number, last count? Uh, I think it was somewhere around uh, over 100 helpers and um, at least four dozen moderators on our staff. And they're on day and night. And they are, we, we have a couple of them here with us down there. Woo! And uh, they help, you know. So, yeah, look to your community for help yeah. as well. Um, yeah, I think that goes, talks a little bit about our uh, next question from Twitter, which is from Blake Key, which says, what is a good strategy to find trustworthy staff members early on uh, to build a team that will stick with the server? Um, look at how they act in the community. It's one of the big things is if they're really mature in the community and are helpful to people, they're probably going to continue that as a moderator. And you just gotta look at the community and also have other moderators suggest people for you and just give suggestions to it. There are a lot of really, really nice people out there uh, that will just out of the goodness of their hearts or for whatever other reason, uh, 
just help out other people, and those are the people that we look to to become new moderators. Uh, moderation is really, it's something that you can uh, give to anyone that you trust. It's not something that is, you know, an exclusive skill. It's just if you have friendly, nice people that really do want to help out, uh, that's uh, a good candidate for a moderator. Uh, let's go to the guy in the overcast shirt on the right. Hi. Um, how do you get that cool plugin that makes it so that you can have the 1.6.2 guys up to 1.6.4 guys up to 1.7.2 guys? <laughs> how, what, what plugin is that? Uh, we're going to field this over here, I think. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's actually not a plugin. It's I wrote a large patch to Bungie Cord that, um, that helps sort of a lot helps allow 1.7 clients to work with 1.6 servers. And um, I haven't decided yet if I'm going to release it, but essentially it's a bungee cord translation thing. So yeah, sorry, that's kind of not very much information. But uh, let's go to the left. Good afternoon, High Life and Laser. Um, OK, so I know all of you deal with scal scalability, and bungee is a big part of that. I'm too tall for this mic. Um, <laughs> what I'm wondering is I just recently saw, I guess like two months ago, that uh, Shopbo is making it so that their servers can go off and on depending upon the quantity of players on the network. Um, can you talk a little bit about how that helps uh, your bottom line in terms of overall cost of running a network? Do you actually turn off physical machines or are you just killing the threads? Um, it, it really is just more about load balancing. So you know, if you try to have a dedicated box for every single game type that you have, then you're basically going to be paying for things that you're not necessarily using. So by spinning up, basically by sharing, we I would say everybody here is using dedicated boxes. So the power of having a dedicated box is that we have full control over it. And so we're writing scripts in the back. Um, I'm sure all of our s processes are probably fairly different, but also very similar in the fact that we have boxes sharing different game types and spooling those up as they're needed. And so if everybody's deciding to play one game type, you know, you're spooling up more of those servers versus uh, just having resources unused. And going back to your bottom line point, yes, it helps a lot. Uh, because one of the challenges as a big network is managing the huge amount of resources required to, uh, to keep things running. Thanks, High Life. Anytime. Thank you, Officer Parkman. <laughs> um, let's go back over to the right. Hello. Um, Hi. I was wondering, um, me and my build team, uh, I have a, a group of friends that we, uh, we're working on this uh, <laughs> uh, a mini game for uh, Minecraft for players to play. And I was wondering, um, is there any way that uh, I could get one of you to even take a look? Or, <laughs> like, I don't know, like, is there any way I can actually contact uh, a server and have them look at the tweet work you've done. Uh, huh? You can tweet it to my Twitter, and I'll I, I reply to every tweet if it's you know a question or something. So um, it's Vlad to be here. That's V L A D <laughs> to be here. Yeah, right. it's, it's, it's it was funny at the time. <laughs> I, I, I guarantee <laughs> that I, I'll take a look at that if if you like, or if anyone else wants to. Volunteer yeah, I mean there. you can yeah. pop on our. We've got a Shopbo subreddit, Reddit slash r Shopbo. Uh, you can just shoot shoot it over in a PM on there or on our forums. I mean, yeah, we're happy to always take a look. And you know, if you're just looking for a little bit of feedback, or if you're looking to like, you need somebody to host it or something. I mean, yeah, we're we've got a few that we host that are made by other people, and we just we're happy to talk with you about it. And and give and even if you just want me to be like, no, this is terrible. Fix that. Like, I love doing that. <laughs> I bet you do. Um, one thing I would add to that is just like in a general aspect, most of most all of our servers have either a subreddit or a form, and I think we all have Twitters and stuff. So if you reach out to us, we're likely to respond. And if you don't hear back to us, it's probably because our servers are on fire or they're <laughs> crashing or something. Um, but if you don't hear back from us, look to our communities. I'm sure there our community, all of our communities are very receptive to trying things out and giving feedback to other server owners. So yep. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, left. How do you deal with negative comments on the server forums? Well, it really depends on, I'd say, the 
type of negative comments. I mean, there's always negative feedback, like, you know, criticism, for example, of something saying, hey, I don't like this, can you change this? And, you know, for that, we always try and listen to it and, you know, judge how much of that kind of feedback we're getting from players. If everybody is complaining, hey, we don't like this, then we'll likely change it or entirely scrap systems. We've actually gone and written games and said, you know, players, how do you like this? And they said they didn't like it, so we just scrapped the game and rewrote it completely. And we, we try to always accept um, criticism like that, but then there's negative, negative, like, you know, I hate this server, this server sucks. And for those players, you know, you're always gonna have players like that. And if they're just saying that to you, then really just accept that everybody, like all the servers, we all receive negative criticism like that. We all receive a lot of it. And even if you have a really supportive player base, you're always going to have some people that just say, yeah, this server sucks. And a lot of the time, they don't mean it. They're just trolls, and so you should ignore them. For us, we mute them. We have a muting system. Our moderation staff helps a lot with that. Just um, you know, eliminating spammers and people that are just there to just you know make a negative feel. But other than that, you know, negative criticism, criticism um, that is you know good for you rather to uh, help improve things. We always try and accept that. I just want to add, there, there are always going to be trolls, there are always going to be people that are just trying to be mean, but there are, all, there are a lot of people that might come across as mean but do have legitimate points. Maybe they're just frustrated. Uh, try not to take things personally. If, you, if someone is complaining about something, that means that there is a way to improve your community, so really think on that feedback and try to ignore it if it's not the nicest thing. Uh, let's go to the right. Hi, this is addressed <coughs> to the Shafo guys. I was wondering, what's the uh, hardest part about maintaining slash managing the Mazi community? <laughs> David? <laughs> uh, uh. I think, I think uh, Mazi is very unique, and I'll be brief here, because I, I want us all to be able to talk uh, in a more general sense, but um, for Mazi, it, it's been around for over a year and a half now, and so you've got a community that's been entrenched for a long time, are very change averse. Um, also, they have that nostalgia of when they got back on it in June of 2012, and they're like, oh, I want that feeling back. And so it's a challenge of, of trying to release new things that keep them happy, but in the same sense, realizing it's an old game. And old games, it, it, it takes a lot of time to breathe life into an old game. So. Uh, you have to be very, very creative. And thanks for the question. No problem. Thank you. Uh, let's go to the left. No, let's not. Oh, oh uh, <laughs> I'm not allowed to ask my question. Um, this is mainly for Cyberbeth, but everybody uh, that runs large networks. How do you deal with denial of service attacks? And uh, you expanded a little bit on the trolling. How do you deal with trolls and denial of service? Denial of service. Um, there's a variety, a variety of ways to deal with that. Um, you can do. Uh, from the more technical perspective, you can do packet scrubbing, you can have just front end hardware dedicated to denial of service attacks. And then there's other strategies like null routing IPs, um, just you know to try and alleviate the strain on the actual boxes. And beyond that, you know, that can only do so much. And all of us have gotten hit by, you know, massive denial of service attacks. And Most for those, players have too. <laughs> yeah. And for those, you know, you just have to batten down the hatches and, you know, just go and deal with it, really. It's going to cause lag. It's going to cause downtime. But the DDoSer will get bored and they'll move on eventually. And for trolls. Yeah, I mean, as far as denial of service, just kind of sticking on that, we we host our services through Staminus Networks. They've got a really good denial of service protection, and they have Intrepid as their like Minecraft server arm. <laughs> and so, I mean, if if that is an issue that you that you're struggling with, and you, you, it's serious enough that you want to address it, you can always look into uh, hosting your server with Intrepid, and and that kind of I mean doesn't negate it entirely. But trolls, I think we go back to the the same feedback. You know, if it's negative, you can judge whether it's malicious or whether it's constructive and go from there. If it's constructive, you know, l reflect on it. If it's negative and just malicious, then just you know, delete it, mute them, and move on. Thank you. Yeah, uh, to the right. Hey guys, in general, from a technical perspective, uh, for a small server, 
What would you suggest are some of the best ways to keep memory usage down? Because that's the problem I seem to be having the most right now. Um, for one, I would recommend you run Spigot as opposed to Bucket if you're running plugins. Um, they've got a booth downstairs and stuff. Uh, you should check it out if you haven't. Um, but they, they've made a lot of improvements. And we all, I think, use Spigot. Yeah? Yeah. And, yeah. and for us, personally, we, we use uh, all custom code, pretty much. And we, we optimize greatly. And uh, as Codename said, uh, Spigot is great on memory usage. And they have a lot of configuration options regarding what things you want to load, what things you don't want to load. And that helps with memory consumption a lot. Like our main lobby that holds 400 players, we use only a couple gigabytes of RAM, really. And that's just after a lot of optimization on our part and fine tuning of Spigot's configs. Um, and just to jump in very specifically on that, if you are a small server and you're seeing a lot of memory usage, that typically comes from entities. So you're looking at mobs and animals uh, as your, your big two things there. So um, get, get a plugin on there that will tell you how many entities you have, and you'll probably be pretty surprised. And with Spigot, you can go in there and fine tune those. So start lowering those limits. As long as you're not too aggressive, your players normally won't notice a huge difference, and it'll, it'll help greatly. Thank you, guys. Yeah, thank you. Uh, I think we're going to head to Twitter again. Uh, this question is from MikeyX3000. <laughs> and this, uh, they asked, how important is it for you that games should be fair for every player, even if one is a donator and another isn't? Uh, anyone want to field this? I think that's vital for player experience, because nobody wants to play against a player who just showed up that day and, and because they had five bucks in their pocket, is going to be able to t kill the other person with two strikes of their sword instead of three. And, and so it's, with, it's definitely a huge balance, and that kind of goes back to the very beginning about the covering server costs. I think there are, uh, there are places that are really aggressive about that, uh, like trying to f get money from players, and, it's, and it's, I think it's important to really assess your priorities when dealing with money, because that's a real thing you've got to deal with if you're trying to grow your server, and just make sure that, it, you know, my perspective on it is just always make sure you're coming from a good place if you add something for purchase and just like think, okay, well, you know, is this, is this to make sure that we're running or is this to just try and squeeze wallets? Because that's not, uh, your players will figure it out pretty quickly. So anyway. Yeah, I mean, you can, uh, what we do is we, we tend to, rather than giving them an advantage, we give them some cool stuff. So like maybe some enchanted armor if it was a blitz game, some better starting kits, maybe some snowballs, you know, just something fun to make it a, the game a bit more interesting for a donator, but without making them extremely overpowered. And for, for our VIP rank, for example, a lot of what we give is cosmetic stuff, and it's things like green name in chat, the ability to shoot a firework in the lobby, um, the ability to join servers that are full that don't necessarily impact the actual gameplay. Um, and in the long run, you know, they get more coins, but right there and then, it's just two people against each other, and they're fairly balanced. And that's, you know, our biggest, um, you know, consumable, or not even consumable, because it's a lifetime purchase. And, you know, that's, that's our way of keeping it fair, because right then and there, even if some, somebody joins the server that day and buys VIP that day, they're not going to be any more powerful than other people. Um, were we on the left next, I think? Yep. Um, yeah. um, I have a l very small homemade server. I don't use any hosting. I just turn com spare computer into a homemade server, and I can figure out how to put mods on it or plugins, probably. It's like, you know, it, yeah, you try it a little bit, but I can't find it. How can you get mods? Like, I'm trying to get Mine and Blade on my server, the mod. I'm trying to get that on, but I. How do you get past that? You have to have the client and server have the mod. How can you get past those? Is there any like bypasses or anything? Well, from the modding perspective, if you're running an actual mod that requires a client mod, like any sort of mod where you're going and actually editing the Minecraft server jar, not plugins or bucket or spigot, you're going to have to have a client mod that works with that. And some mod packs or some mo individual mods, they are compatible with not requiring the client mod, but a lot of them are, because if it adds new blocks and the other clients, the regular old vanilla clients, they don't have that block, they can't handle the data from it, so it requires the client mod. And to get around that, there isn't really 
too much of a way to get around that issue, actually. That's one of the things that the modding API is going to help a, lo a lot with when it finally comes out. And uh, yeah. And especially with Sarge now on the team, that yeah. dude is awesome. So I'm excited for him and Grum to be working on that modding API. I think we are all extremely excited for you and for us uh, yep. with the modding API because being able to control the client GUI and do all this stuff from an official like Mojang uh, standpoint is going to be awesome for both you and us. So uh, once that modding API, it's going to be awesome. Uh, so let's go to the right. Uh, I run a small survival server. And uh, I've been using Bucket, which sounds like I might go with Spigot now. Um, and I try and keep it as vanilla-like as I can, but I also want to see if I can get a back-end plug-in where I can track what people are doing. So if someone like breached the building, I can find out who did it and take the appropriate actions. Is there maybe a plugin that you can recommend? Um, I think that I would just recommend you check out the Bucket Forms, because there's a huge variety of logging plugins. Uh, I know Logblock's one of them. There's just a ton of plugins that you can find on the Bucket Forms, or I think it's plugins.bucket.org. And those actually, they all work with Spigot. So, yep. Yeah, you'll need a database set up for that kind of level of volume of data. but. Um, you can either set that up on like one of your spare computers if you have one, um, or there's v very affordable thing options out there. So, uh, yeah. I uh, host on um, Pro Hosting, Microsoft okay. Pro Hosting, mm -hmm. so I think they have a MySQL with it. So. Yep. Yeah, so yeah, you're sort of come with it. You okay. just have to look on their forums, or not their forums, but their support website. It has instructions on how to set up stuff with MySQL right there. Okay. Uh, to the left. Um, when dealing with donations, is it better to use um, monthly or like unlimited days? And if it's monthly, what would be a good price for um, an unlimited one? Um, I, get, I can go for this. I think really it depends on how much you have to offer with each of your individual ranks. Uh, to is how you get a price point set because if you're offering like thirty dollars for like a star or something, you know, obviously that's not going to have value. But if you have a lot of offers for a package, you can sort of base your price point on how much you are going to give the user in return. Did that fully answer it? All right, <laughs> let's go to the right. Hi, I've been uh, coding since '81. I've been in the uh, professional software industry for. 25, I've been doing games for 12 uh, professionally. Mm -hmm. I think this is an amazing meta community here. Um, I've never seen so many young entrepreneurs, coders, designers, etc. cetera. Um, I'm mostly interested in what is your outlook on this community? Where is this going? I actually got into it. I, I've been a developer for a few years, and I actually got into it because I kind of started losing my steam working for the man and, and just kind of like... I need, I need something to reignite that passion that got me into coding in the first place. And so, and so I was like, oh, Minecraft, that's cool, and started writing mods for it. And, and I've been just blown away, because I only showed up on the scene like a year and a half ago. Um, and it was just, I mean, it's just, I'm, I'm, I'm astounded by it. And I'm, I can't wait to see what this shapes in the future uh, with, I mean, so many young minds just gaining the managerial skills, the organization, the planning, the debugging, the testing, the amazing. Um, all right. We are actually, unfortunately, out of time, uh, but we'd love for you to stick around. We're going to be here for about an hour or so if you want to come ask us questions that you didn't get to ask during the panel. We have free t-shirts. I know Hypixel has some free stuff. Uh, so come on up. Ask us questions. Oh, Thank you for up. coming. We got to go out. Out. We got Minecraft oh. next. Oh, so. we're going outside. Oh, we got to get out of here. <laughs> get us outside. We'll, we'll so yeah, head outside. outside. We love you all. Thank, Thank you for coming. So yeah, head outside. We love you all. Thank you for coming. Thank you so much. Thank you for coming. Thank you so much. Thank you for coming.